Hey guys, Mike here. Um, I'm going to do a video that basically discusses traffic shaping for you. I uh, just got done uploading or updating uh, my Forda Wi-Fi 61E that I used for my lab to um, 604. Uh, for those of you that don't know 604, 603 had a GUI load issue to where if you know if you're going to DHCP monitor or IPsec monitor or hell a lot of the pages it would just sit there and spin unless you clicked off of it or did certain things so 604 fixed that for me um, but yeah this this video is going to be a traffic shaping a very basic tra approach to traffic shaping so um, it may cause you guys to ask questions that you didn't already know or that come to mind because you just didn't really understand how it works and that's fine just hit them up in the comments and I'll answer however I can um, also while I'm making this video I'm in the process of updating over 40 Forta gates from a Forta manager. So, if you haven't played with the Forta manager or Forta analyzer, I definitely recommend it. Um, I actually um, manage and maintain over a thousand different Forta gates thanks to Forta managers. So it makes it very easy for me uh, between the clients I consult and the ones I'm directly responsible for. But anyways, so a basic explanation of how. Uh, traffic shaping works in 6.0. Back in 5.2 and all that jazz, you would apply traffic shaping through app control or on the policy itself or, you know, things like that, which is um, super granular, but it's really easy to forget where you place things and all that. So in 6.0, they, they basically broke traffic. Well, they, they did this previously, but it continues to operate in this manner in 6.0. Um, you have two sections, right? You have traffic shapers which you can think of as UTM sensors that you apply to your traffic shaping policy and the traffic shapers are the the things that give you the ability to you know set the parameters right like if I want to create a shared shaper which means all the IPs that that shaper is applied to share whatever allocation you put in the shaper um, you know you just create a new shared and you apply it to your traffic shaping policy if you wanted to do a per IP shaper which means if you have 100 different IPs on your network and you wanted them all guaranteed at least one meg of the 100 meg link that your uh, office has you could do a per IP guaranteed 100 meg or you know max bandwidth of 100 meg however you wanted to do it so the, uh, the two main things for your shapers are shared shaper per IP shaper shared every IP that hits that shaper shares the allocated uh, parameters of the setting uh, per IP each IP individually is able to extend to the max of whatever that shaper says so let me switch on over here um, as you can see for the Wi-Fi 61E uh, under policies and objects this has a very basic policy right it's just a dummy policy that says all all allow all this is what you would use out of the box if you were really, really paranoid about breaking things, right? So you come down to traffic shapers, and as you can see, I have none. You can create new, and you have your shared and per IP. So on your shared, you can say guaranteed bandwidth. I at least want them to have a meg. You can say your max bandwidth, I want them to have is 10 meg. And you would name it something appropriate. That way you're very very clear. Uh, we're not going to worry about DSCP right now. Uh, those things will be in the more advanced videos. So that'll give us some direction there. So this is a 10 meg shared shaper. So all the IPs on this network will share these parameters, meaning they'll they'll have a guaranteed 1 meg between all of them and a max of 10 meg between all of them, which means they pretty much get guaranteed 100k each, 1 meg each, etc. Create OK. Then you come down to your. Now remember, I said to treat this like it's a UTM sensor that you would apply to your policy, because you actually define your policy right here under traffic shaping policy. Uh, so by default, it sets up an implicit one that is everything's medium priority for any out face, interface, etc. So I come in here, create new <coughs> source. If you have a group of users or a group of IPs, you can set that here. So for instance, if anything on the 10 
dot o dot dot o dot o dot o slash eight going to anything related to update.microsoft.com or just that up well actually let's do all during work hours oh I don't have a schedule okay let's we'll skip schedule for now schedule lets you make it only apply during certain times of the day but the only schedule I have on this box is the always so it's kind of a moot point I don't really care about services so I'll say all of them but then you can say application category is it doing updates um, is it doing social media peer-to-peer -peer? you know you don't want folks um, doing peer-to-peer -peer and nuking your internet connection when you're sitting there trying to do standard work stuff right so you can you can get very granular here down to the actual application that's being used uh, the category of the URL um, very very fluid here so for starters we'll say all services all destinations from my internal network if it is a update mm -hmm. now what this little alert right here is telling us is this won't actually be put in use because I don't have application um, control enabled on that dummy policy I created but for the sake of um, uh, demonstration it'll be fine and then you say outgoing interface well that's my outside interface because that's my zone that has all of my WAN members in it and it's a shared shaper so I'll use 10 meg you would throw your per IP in here or your reverse in here so this is very 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 simple and just like your firewall this will read it top down left to right like you do um, so basically what this says is any of my 10.0.0.0 space going anywhere via the outside interface use the 10 meg shared if it's you know um, where you go if it's an update category by default it takes off a lot of the things so I had to add those that's my bad so anything from the 10 space going anywhere via the outside address interface or the outside interface use the 10 meg shared if it's in the application category of update this is useful in situations where you want to be able to perform updates during the day but you don't necessarily want to nuke your users ability to surf the internet perform work functions things like that and the last thing we want to do is cause work outages so um, yeah, like I said, yeah, very very basic uh, breakdown of how it works. Create your shaper, assign the parameters to it that you wish, uh, name it appropriately so you can keep things organized. Standardization is key, and then you create your actual policy and apply that shaper to the policy based on your source, your destination, and the destination interfaces. Um, you can do this. You don't have to do this just from inside to outside. You can do outside the inside or outside the DMZ. So if you have a, a web server that's providing, um, you know, public downloads for some reason, you can throttle that to keep it from overwhelming your link. Uh, also, you know, if you know you have a slower link between two uh, devices, let's say you have a switch somewhere that's only 100 meg, you can perform shaping here to make sure that you don't overrun that switch to keep mission critical stuff operational. So. Um, but that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to come up with some um, an agenda for a more in-depth video. And then from there, we can explain things like DSCP and just how granular you can get. So, But until then, uh, ask any questions below, and I'll be more than happy to answer. Thanks.